Today on Seculo, in the U.S. State Department and the Department of Homeland Security, Jew haters have been exposed, but they have not been fired. We're going to talk about that today on Seculo. Keeping you informed and engaged, now more than ever, this is Seculo. We want to hear from you. Share and post your comments or call 1-800-684-3110. And now your host, Jordan Seculo. Welcome to Seculo, folks. We've got a lot to talk about today on Seculo. We're taking your phone calls to a 1-800-684-3110 uh, this November 1st. As we begin this month, we are learning very troubling information about what's happening inside the United States of American government. For instance, Senator Josh Hawley has questioned the Homeland Security Secretary, Alejandro Mayorkas, about one of his employees at DHS. They are there to protect Americans, including, by the way, and you understand why I'm saying this, Jewish Americans. This employee praises terrorists on their social media, still remains employed by the government. Um, uh, He's asked about uh, revoking visas from students from Israel and Jewish people. He's used expletives about Israel, the F word. Um, I mean, again, you can't even read a lot of the things that this guy has said about Jews. Uh, calls, of course, Israel an apartheid state. But then he goes even further. This is an asylum and immigration officer posting these pro-genocidal slogan and images. And he was doing it on the day, on October 7th. But he's been doing it for years, and yet he has not been fired. Hey, an employee of the federal government. That's just one of them. No, I know. There's two. There's a second. You head over to uh, the... Uh, uh, this department, which is, which department is this, Will? This is the U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, the second department. They hired a PLO spokesperson. I mean, I can't, can't this is. This horrible. is a spokesperson for another terrorist organization that runs the West Bank and Abbas. She was kicked out of the United States by the Trump administration. The Biden administration brought her back into the United States. And hires a federal employee. As a spokesperson. She's a spokesperson to handle asylum claims. Now, if you were a Jew seeking asylum, would you like having this PLO person in charge now, of your claim? We're going to what these po- people posted, folks. I mean, it's, it's beyond oh, outrageous. What right. they've said is... is, out, is un- some of it you can't even put on air. But the statements that they make are outrageous. Now, I was at the UN in 2016 at the General Assembly for a big conference on boycott, divest, and sanctions. You wanna, when do you want to play that, Will? Okay. Take a listen to what I said. Make no mistake... The goal is unambiguous. The intent is clear. It is to create an environment so hostile that those students of you that are here today would be afraid to say the word, I am a Zionist. I am a Jew. Never, never, on the memory of our families, should we allow that to take place. And the least in the United States of America. I was working for a campaign in Miami, Florida. I remember watching that speech, Ed, and thinking, you know, we should never have that in the United States of America. BDS is one thing. Jews have been dealing with that in Israel for a long time. But the threat of murder, death, that not just the the random hate crimes from the white supremacist groups, but this, again, this pitched war between all Muslims. I want to underscore, again, this spokesperson at the PLO, on the day, October 7th, that they were actually – Hosting Hamas terrorists parachuting in with the guns. This is a state, a, a spokesperson. We're going to get US in government. depth on this. We have also launched today our Faith and Freedom Drive. We're at a moment in history that we prayed we'd never see. And we are unfortunately are experiencing the global attacks on our faith. And we're also seeing the hostility here in the United States. So what's happening between Israel and the United States right now, it's outrageous. Here at the ACLJ, we are uniquely positioned to meet these evil attacks head on. We've got a full slate of lawyers in our European office, our Washington, D.C. office, which we're going to be in next week, working on this. We've got a really assembled an elite team of lawyers and government affairs professionals. So we need you now more than ever. The country needs you. The world needs you. The ACLJ needs you. And it certainly Israel needs you. Go to ACLJ.org. It's our Faith and Freedom Drive. Any amount you donate, we're going to get a matching gift for. Faith and Freedom 2024. Now more than ever. This is 
Nuja Ali, an employee of the Department of Homeland Security, who posted these comments. She also posted this graphic. This is a Hamas paraglider depicted here with a machine gun flying into Israel. She posted it under her online alias with the celebratory Free Palestine. This is an asylum and immigration officer who is posting these frankly pro-genocidal slogans and images on the day that Israelis are being slaughtered in their beds. To suggest that it, that is emblematic of the men and women of the Department of Homeland Security is despicable. Never I'm sorry, what have you, this person works for the Department of Homeland Security. Have you fired her? That was one of four answers. Have you fired her? One. Have you fired her? Don't come to this hearing room when Israel has been invaded and Jewish students are barricaded in libraries in this country and cannot be escorted out because they are threatened for their lives. You have employees who are celebrating genocide and you are saying it's despicable for me to ask the question? She drew attention to the fact that she is an immigration and asylum officer. Hashtag immigrants, hashtag asylum seekers, hashtag Palestine. Has she admitted, contrary to law, individuals who should not be in this country or denied Jewish refugees, whose genocide she's advocating, asylum that they deserve? I cannot speak to an ongoing... You said that you will not. Matter. I can't believe that you would come to this committee knowing this. You know about this. I've written to you about it. You know all about it. And you come here unwilling to answer and suggest that it is wrong of me to ask you the question. I think that your performance is despicable. And I think the fact that you are not willing to provide answers to this committee is absolutely atrocious. Welcome back to Secular. I know, again, we are giving you new information about two different individuals inside the U.S. government. I want to focus on one of them right now. And, and we're going to name them out. Because they do this publicly. They're proud of what they're saying. Fritz uh, Berg, Be Bergren, he is currently a U.S. State Department employee, a Foreign Service officer. And if we did talk to Rick Rennell today, Foreign Service officers are very difficult jobs to get. I mean, you go through all of your undergraduate, graduate education, and then a long training program at the State Department. I mean, it's a dream job for many people who want to work in foreign policy. And, and you're very much... Uh, you're supposed to have your background checked. Everything you say online uh, could impact your career. Unless, of course, I guess you're saying it about Jews. Because even back in 2021, they started taking notice that he is making these comments. He runs a blog called Blood and Faith, mm. a podcast called Fritz Report. Here are some things he has said. Can we play this? Let's go. This is this is your U.S. State Department employee. You pay his salary, and he is a Foreign Service officer. He said this in just the last few days. The Jews worship Satan, and they're Satan's own children. Understand who our enemies are. Don't apologize. Never, ever, ever apologize for being white. Never do that. Oh, you can't be racist or sexist or homophobic. Says who? He also said, who's the enemy? It's the Jews. Uh, he said, Jesus Christ came to save the world from the Jews. They're the seed of the serpent, the brood of vipers, and that we are invaded, egged on by traitors and Jews who hate the white race. Do we, have, do, we have, do we have all this on vi on audio? Have we pulled all these audio bites? Do we have summer them? Post, summer posts, summer videos. Oh, summer posts, summer videos. I want to say something here. Remember that uh, domestic violence extremists they were doing about pro-lifers? Yeah. yeah, well, they should be doing that. You know, Chris Ray, take your re – Andy, you said this yesterday. Chris Ray needs to take his resources and maybe investigate the United States Department of State. Yes, that's a good idea there. Instead of politicizing the Justice Department for other purposes, it might be good for the FBI to go across the street and look at the State Department and see exactly who their employees are and what they're saying with respect to the Jews in the United States and so in the world. This guy is a foreign service officer that we are paying. Yeah, as of right now, he has not been put on leave or anything. He's Nothing. there. He's there. How did this happen, and how did the State Department know this? They know every pro-lifers move. They go you into know, a Catholic church. They'll be, don't mind going to Catholic church. By the way, I've already authorized our team at the ACLJ. We're going to initiate litigation on this guy and find out everything we can about him through a Freedom of Information Act demand and then litigation. Okay. I'm also announcing that we are filing a lawsuit on Friday. That's the plan on Friday involving all this Israel, Hamas, 
funding that's going on to these various groups. We're getting to the bottom of all this, folks. All that funding goes through. When you have people like this at the State Department, you know, you, you scratch your head and say, why do we keep giving money when we know they misuse it? Well, a million dollars we know goes to Mahmoud Abbas's son, the head of the Palestinian Liberation Organization, okay? Of course it is. Look who's running the State Department. Yeah. I mean, look at this. This is – here's the other person we were talking about, Najwa Ali. She is a DHS employee. She handles asylum requests – from Middle East countries. When President Trump came in in 2016 and 2017, she was a public affairs officer at the Palestinian delegation to the U.S., and she was kicked out of the United States. She's back in, uh, but uh, she has been put on administrative leave, at least by DHS. That's only after she said, F Israel, the government and its military, are you ready for your downfall? While posting on October 7th images, I'll show it to those of you watching, of, of Hamas terrorists parachuting in to kill Israelis. There's the imaging right there. This is from an individual paid, by the way. who is getting paid, is a Department of Homeland Security employee who handles, Andy, asylum requests from Middle East countries. Well, I read that and turned my stomach. I couldn't believe well, I thought, that she would be put in that position. Why would we have somebody from the PLO, okay, hired back in the United States to handle asylum requests for people coming out of the Middle East. I mean, think about that for a minute. They talk about you find these terrorists at the border. Well, yeah. no wonder we're finding we're terrorists. We're at the border. They could come right in through the legal process with that's these right. people running it. Apparently that's the case, and that's what our justice, our uh, State Department is fostering and doing in this situation. You're taking people who work, used to work for the PLO, a terrorist organization, along with Hamas and Hezbollah, and you're putting them in a position where they determine whether you can apply for under the immigration laws and regulations and get asylum applications. And these are people working for the United States of America, for the U.S. government that we're paying for. Deplorable situation. Deplorable. It's disgusting. They're putting the whole country at risk. Look what's going on. The world's on fire. By the way, Joe Biden, you know what? I'm going to say this publicly, okay, because I've, I've had it. Your policies are horrific. You're running a government that is not functioning, We've got a, a mess in Russia, Ukraine, and Eastern Europe. The Middle East is on fire, and you're afraid to say you're Jewish in the United States of America. That's a pretty bad day. Well, I want, I want to tell you that this individual, Najwa Ali, worked in 2016 and 2017 for the PLO office, that's the Palestinian uh, Liber Liberation Organization, in D.C. Donald Trump and President Trump, Mike Pompeo, and that team shut that office down. But you know what? She's she's now only not only working for like the Palestinians somewhere in the Middle East. She's landed on her feet inside the U.S. government. So while she, her office was shut down as basically a terror hub operating in D.C., just like they shut down the Iranian press TV. Remember that it was it used to be right next to CBN News in Washington D.C. Actually, it was the Iranian press TV, and we shut down RT, which was the Russian propaganda a news channel as well. As more information came there, but yet you'd think after she gets and her whole office thrown out of the United States. No worries for her. She'll get a job at the U.S. government. And that's where she is today, adjudication officer for the U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services. And she did not get put on administrative leave until on October 7th. She put out that message, F Israel, the government and its military. Are you ready for your downfall? With the imagery of the Hamas uh, terrorist parachuting in, to kill all of those families at kibbutzes, children, babies, women, and, of course, people attending a dance concert in the desert who, again, has just been put on administrative leave. She's sitting at home right now. She's still getting her check. Met a lot of you right now that are getting checks. You're not sitting at home. This is how and, – and if you said this at your office, private place about, about anyone, you'd never have a job again? I, I got I to say this. Okay. Okay. Look, about look, people. Look. This is, no, this human is beings. fire these people. I mean, what's the worst thing to do? So Sue us for, for wrongful termination? I throw her out of the country if she's not a citizen. I, th I, I mean, have a you know, she is. Give her, she is a citizen? She must be dual because when the PLL office got closed, she stayed in D.C. and eventually got the well, job then you gotta go with the U.S. Process. government. That's fine. But let me tell you what we got here. Okay, you what you got is when we're wondering if they're getting people in, we're worried about the southern border, which we should. Let me tell you what else. They're coming in through the front door. Yeah. The front door oh, I wonder how many to the United States of America. And we're allowing Jewish, Jewish students to be ha have to hide in cafeterias and closets like they're Anne Frank in the year 2023 in the United States of America, in New York. By the way, I will thank the governor, a Democrat, 
for getting the police to get that and the FBI to get that arrest the person responsible. You know, it makes even more sense of why Christopher Ray said what he said yesterday, because if the, a kind of individual like this was handling what Palestinians could get immigration status inside the U.S. government, in, inside the United States between 2016 and 2017, she could have been picking out the people who were the extremists. Well, don't you she could have been bringing in the terror cells. But don't you think, Chris Ray, Andy could have had found this information out and had a couple FBI agents go over well, and talk to her? You know, he knows about it. He said he knew about it. He knew about You know, he, he should have done what he was supposed to do. He says he knew about it. He said it was that the Jews are the biggest uh, attacked minority, or rather uh, uh, ethnic group in the United States for the, the percentage of the population, and yet he hadn't done anything about it except make a statement with respect to it. How about taking some action? Here you've got this woman, Nud. Najwa Ali, I want to say that name, Najwa Ali, public relations officer for the Palestinian delegation to the U.S., now working for, on leave, yes, but was in the adjudication office for U.S. citizenship where she did, a quote, analyze new or amended legislation and policy, prepare written reports and findings, review and make determinations on cases for immigration benefits. Mm. Mm. This is what she did, and that's what her history was, and she was working for the U.S. government. Okay, folks, we have launched today a faith and freedom drive. Uh, obviously, Israel is a big part of it, but so is it right here in the United States, because we got to put an end to this. Uh, we're at a moment in history, frankly, as I said, I, I never thought we would see this, and I'm sure we would never see this again. Uh, we're experiencing global tax on our faith and our freedoms. We're seeing it right here in the United States now. Uh, we're seeing genocide. We're seeing the attempt to eradicate religious groups, including right now the focus seems to be on Jews, but Christians, of course, in the Middle East. We're witnessing in Israel what could be the precursor to a second Holocaust. It was the most Jews killed in Israel since the Holocaust. And at the ACLJ, by God's grace, we are uniquely positioned, uniquely positioned to be able to address this. Our office in Strasbourg, France, was successful in obtaining a resolution from the European Parliament. Our offices in Washington, D.C. are right now working around the clock as we bring some big information to you next week from Washington. I cannot disclose what it is. We've authorized the filing of a lawsuit today. Okay, so we're, that's going forward. We may well have action at the United Nations. All of this is happening si simultaneously. We need you now more than ever. The country needs you. The world needs you. Israel needs you. And we need you here at the ACLJ. Have your gift doubled through the ACLJ's Faith and Freedom Drive today it's that important it is that important folks i mean we're learning about what's happening not just in israel not just in the middle east but the extremism extremism in our own country and by the way the extremism they have a hold against jews guess who's next on their list christians christians most of our audience is listening right now you're next on the list if they kill all the jews this is the time of year when we give thanks for all the blessings in our lives, our family, our health. But what about our more profound blessings that we as Americans are privileged to enjoy? Our faith, our freedom, unique liberties that so many people around the world can only dream about. Freedom to worship, freedom to speak. They're fragile freedoms that must be vigorously defended. And we've witnessed the attacks on faith and freedom on a global scale. It's time to take a bold step. To join us in the fight. To join us in upholding the Constitution and to defend the freedoms you hold most dear for your family, for our country, and for the world. Go to aclj.org to support our faith and freedom drive. This time of years, we're giving thanks, celebrating our liberties that we have in the United States. We also see those liberties are under attack. Freedom to speak, our freedom of religion, Victories that we have won over decades are being refought again in courts and in the halls of Congress, in international institutions. We're seeing, of course, the conflicts raging around the world, not just in Ukraine, but now in the Middle East and our ally, Israel, which is so important to so many of our ACLJ supporters. So our liberties here at home, you know they're under attack. Our friends, our allies around the world are under attack as well. That's why. This faith and freedom drive is so important for you to donate. Dollar for dollar. You donate, we match. Dollar for dollar. Each donation. This is an important time, the most important time, 
to support the work of the ACLJ. All right, welcome back to Secchio. We are taking your calls. I want to play this uh, just back to back for you, just kind of as a reminder, because you've got, of course, Fritz Bergren. He is a current U.S. State Department employee, a Foreign Service officer since 2021. That's a big position, folks. I'll just tell you. I know people who, in undergrad at GW, who you've got to know multiple languages. You then have to get a master's. You have to pass language tests. Then you have to pass the, the Foreign Service exam. And then you end up uh, getting assigned somewhere around the world or inside the State Department. It's a rigorous process. It's something people work towards and hope they get that job their entire life. Well, Fritz Bergren did. But this is the kind of comments he's making on his podcast. Just take a listen to this quick one. Who's the enemy? It's the Jew, the Jew, the Jew, the Jew, the Jew. Yeah. What's the problem? Say it again. Play it again. Who's the enemy? It's the Jew, the Jew, the Jew, the Jew, the Jew. Who's the enemy? That's what he the said. Jew, the Jew, the Jew. And now, Chris, how is this person employed by the United well, States State Department? I would like to ask. Chris, Can I ask that question? Uh, just like Josh Holly, how in the world do they allow this? Well, how is Christopher Ray not showing up at this guy's door right now and saying you're threatening a, a group? Yeah, because he said it yesterday about how terrorism's on the rise of the U.S. or the threat by uh, 24. This is a threat that is uh, reaching, in some ways, sort of historic levels, um, in part because, uh, as you know all too well. The Jewish community uh, is targeted by terrorists really across the spectrum. Homegrown violent extremists, foreign terrorist organizations, both Sunni and Shia, domestic violent extremists. uh, And in fact, our statistics would indicate that for a group that represents only about 2.4% of the American public, they account for something like 60% of all religious-based hate crimes. Here's the thing for Chris Ray. How about you're you're the FBI? You've got government officials putting out this hate. Why don't you why don't you knock on uh, Fritz Bergen's door right now, seize his files, and see what else he's got planned? Yeah. Well, you know what? They have no hesitation in showing up with guns pointed at at pro life protesters, CC. But you got a guy in your State Department, and you're doing nothing. You're, well, you're paying him. That's what you're doing. You're yeah. That just based off of theory, of course, not off of of any information they right. actually had. Yeah, they absolutely give excuses. For anybody who is anti-Semitic, they just they give excuse after excuse. But again, like you said, if you're pro-life, oh, my gosh, they're coming to your door with weapons drawn. Right. And the fact that they just kind of blow this off is ridiculous. And and you you work for these agencies and and I've worked for government agencies. What is going on here? Is it is the problem that the people that are actually the asylum officers are the enemy? No, the problem, Jay, is what you said earlier. Where is the president of the United States? That's what I want to know. Where is Joe Biden? The FBI is skulking around Catholic churches, listening to the mass and seeing if there's anything subversive. We have no control. There is no one in control. And that's why these agencies are running wild, because there is no one at the helm. The ship has not got a captain. There is no one in command of the vessel of the United States. The president of the United States is walking along Rehoboth Beach and having coffee and croissants. He has no idea what he's saying or what he's doing. The emperor, folks, has no clothes, but we won't say that. And that's why we're in this chaos. Yeah, but I do want to go to also, because we're not just, you know, we don't just sit here and talk about chaos, say about how horrible it is. As you said, Dad, we're planning work next week that we can't even announce yet. But, CC, you are you also are, are engaged right now in serious work. So we're going to be all over the country uh, next week and all over the world with our team. We've got people from all over the world working on this. Uh, literally, what's going to be happening at the U.N.? Well, right now, today, we sent a letter to the United Nations Security Council, the, the incoming president, which we do regularly, letting them know that the Palestinian Authority cannot be considered a state, a member state at the U.N. And so we added in this letter, of course, pointing out the atrocities of Hamas and that obviously the Palestinian Authority does not have their so-called Palestinian land under control because Hamas is in control of a lot of it and they're absolute terrorists and they have indiscriminately attacked innocent Israel and therefore they absolutely cannot be um, even considered as a state at the United Nations. The incoming president today of the Human Rights Council, a Security Council, is China. 
I mean, okay, so you know, so we know what happens with that letter. They don't even take it. So you know what we did? We sent it to every one of the other Security Council members. That's right. So we sent it to. There's five permanent re- members. We these sent it to all letters, of them. By the way, these are demands for legal action. Exactly. And we also sent it to the ten non-permanent members. So they all have been put on notice that this is ridiculous, and what Hamas is doing and the Palestinian Authority is allowing is ridiculous and horrendous. You know, I think what we have to understand here is we are at a precipice moment. Uh, and I think while we're launching this Faith and Freedom Drive today uh, because faith and freedom are under attack by a global Islamist movement uh, backed uh, by Iran and uh, also organizations that in the past would not work together because of some religious Islamic differences are now uniting. I mean, you see the Houthis, you see all of these different, what's going on in Syria, uh, U.S. troops being attacked, Iran. Turkey, a NATO ally, uh, you know, saying they might send troops and they might send jets in, which would be our jets uh, yeah, that they'd be trying to for a minute. Maybe we shouldn't be so quick at giving them, F, you know, 30, 35s or whatever the current technology that we just gave them if they're going to do this stuff. If they're going to make threats like this to our, our ally. Yeah. Maybe say, you know what, Erdogan, you're, you're such a, by the way, big tough guy. Okay. <laughs> take the jets away and take the American protection away and the American technology. Do you think they want to rely on the Russian technology? I don't think so. Oh, I thought you were about to say, because the truth would be, if you took all of that away, I think he'd be hanging in the streets. Yeah. That's because he almost so. ended up that way. He remember? almost ended up that way. Yeah. I mean, the, here's the there. truth. The truth is, know who your friends are, know who your enemies are, and let's start calling it like it is. But we've got enemies inside the State Department and the Department of Homeland Security and a Homeland Security a uh, director that said his he is the son of Holocaust survivors. Well, that certainly should be more impetus for you because you understand it, Mayorkas, director. You have to be more impetus for you to actually do something and not let some PLO sympathizer, talking point, or State Department foreign officer say this stuff. I just don't know how someone who, again, you can be an American, dual citizen, you know, but who is Palestinian, and obviously a U.S. citizen, works for the PLO office in Washington, D.C. That office gets closed by the Trump administration. And then right when Biden's in, lands the job as an immigration official, uh, again, uh, to handle asylum claims from the Middle East. This is someone who posted on October 7th an image of the Hamas terrorist parachuting into Israel, I'm putting it up again, to kill uh, uh, to kill Jews. This is someone, again, who said, F Israel, the government, and its military. Are you ready for your downfall? She's been placed on administrative leave, but she should have never gotten that job in the first place after losing the job with the Palestinian Authority because of the radicalization and terrorism they were supporting. But that's who this, when she saw the Biden administration got in, she said, Man, I got my next job. I'm going to be working for my the U.S. government. So she's been working for the Palestinian Authority and the U.S. government, and she's not just doing her job and staying quiet about it. No, no, no. I'm going to put up hate images. I'm going to I'm going to use uh, you know curse words about how uh, the Jews and Israelis are ready for their downfall. And remember, this other employee, he's not just talking about Israel, Fritz Bergren. He talks about Jews are the enemy, not Israel. Jews. Yeah, I think he said the enemy are Jews, 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 Jews. These people are working and being paid by you to run our foreign service. Maybe that's why there's war in Ukraine, war in Israel, and and China's about to you know invade Taiwan. Semitism here. We're in our faith and freedom drive, which we've launched today, folks. <clears throat> I want to encourage you to support the work of the ACLJ. Any amount you donate is matched through faith and freedom drive. And there's a lot to be praying for for this country and for other country allies of ours. ACLJ.org. This is the time of year when we give thanks for all the blessings in our lives, our family, our health. But what about our more profound blessings that we as Americans are privileged to enjoy? Our faith, our freedom, unique liberties that so many people around the world can only dream about. Freedom to worship, freedom to speak, They're fragile freedoms that must be vigorously defended. And we've witnessed the attacks on faith and freedom on a global scale. It's time to take a bold step. To join us in the fight. To join us in upholding the Constitution. And to defend the freedoms you hold most dear for your family, for our country, and for the world. 
Go to ACLJ.org to support our faith and freedom drive. Keeping you informed and engaged, now more than ever, this is Seculo. And now your host, Jordan Seculo. Folks, i got to tell you about this, and we keep pulling more information as it, as it comes about. Uh, these two uh, U.S. government officials, because you think you'll be talking a lot. We'll keep you updated, of course, what's happening on the ground in Israel uh, with the war with Hamas. But sometimes it's important to also talk about how this is going to affect us here in the United States, because Christopher Ray said the threat of terrorism here in the United States is on the high, highest levels it's been in years from Islamic terrorism. And we now kind of have an interest of maybe why. For once, we look at someone like Najwa Ali. She is a DHS employee who handles asylum requests from Middle East countries. Her former job in 2016 and 2017, she worked for the Palestinian delegation to the U.S. She was ultimately barred from entering the U.S. under Trump. But the Biden administration let her back in, and gave her this job as the DHS employee on those asylum requests. This is what she has said since October 7th. I talked about the F Israel, the government, its military. Are you ready for your downfall? This is what she said about the Hamas terror attack. Respect our existence or expect resistance. Simple, no apologies. On Facebook, Israeli American privilege is disgusting. Say that again. Israeli American privilege is disgusting when Israelis acknowledge the government and military are solely responsible for the attack, period. I hold every is- Israeli accountable for their government's actions if they do not speak against Israel. When they say words like accountable, that means you can kill them yeah. under her language. It goes further oh, than that. Going. She said, because you think, oh, maybe she's just talking about Israel. On October 9th, she, she posted a video with the caption, F Israel and any Jew that supports Israel. She is working for the U.S. government. The United States has plenty of Jews and plenty of Jews working in the U.S. government. And she's saying that any Jew that would support the state of Israel, well, you know, I, I said, the, I didn't want to say the word, but you know what she said. On Instagram, and this is all just since October 7th, when you'd think she'd be a little bit quieter. Palestine will be free one day. F apartheid Israel and any Israeli that supports that BS uh, F you, may Allah forgive you and spare us the crocodile tears. I sure as oh, uh, heck give zero F. I mean, first of all, the language they're using could get them fired, I would think. You would as, think. As they're senior. not getting fired. This government's no, going to do nothing. Leave, She'll be paid. on leave. She'll get paid. She is getting paid. It's going to be like that doctor that said, if I have to, uh, you know, give health care to a Jew, I'm going to kill them. We got her to suspended and be delicensed. But this is absurd. You think this would happen, by the way? I'm going to, can I just say this? You think this would have happened under the previous administration with, no. you know what? I'll take the crazy tweets that you don't like sometimes and not have this. Uh, that's a fair trade to me. This is ridiculous. And I like to see, we do have friends on the Democratic side here. Please speak out, Democratic members of Congress, and say we can't tolerate this. Chuck Schumer, the majority leader in the United States Senate, say it. This is a, a, a outrageous what's going on here in our own government. Yeah. I mean, our, it, it makes it where you think that we talk about the terrorists coming across the border. That's one thing. What about the terrorists this woman may have let in? People with sympathies close to her who are waiting for these moments, like Christopher Ray just confirmed yesterday, when uh, they get activated. And when I say activated, I mean people who would usually maybe just post these kind of statements. Now they're taken to the streets, Dad. We saw them take to the streets. They were pretty peaceful protests, screaming, but peaceful. Now they're turning violent. You see what happened in London just yesterday? Right. They're a step away from people being beaten to death in the street. How would you like to be a Jew in London? How would you like to, uh, to be a Jew really anywhere if you run into one of these marches? You, you would not. Folks, we um, launched today our Faith and Freedom Drive, and the focus obviously is Israel. And we launched it, was planned to launch a, a drive in November, but we did not believe and I think none of us thought we would ever see something like this. We're seeing it in Israel, we're seeing it in the Middle East, and we're seeing it right here in the United States of America. Here at the ACLJ, we are uniquely positioned because of your support of our work, which we thank you for. We've assembled an incredible team of lawyers and government affairs officials that are going to be are working around the clock now, but we've got big meetings and big work next week in Washington. We've assembled this team to meet the challenge. We need you to help us meet our goal. Go to aclj.org. Any amount you donate, we're getting a match for. And if you can make that gift a recurring gift, 
you also not only become part of the Faith and Freedom Group, you also become an ACLJ champion. ACLJ.org, Faith and Freedom. I'm before you today, and it's a humbling experience for me. But the task that we have before us is great, and we have no time for delay. In one of my very first Supreme Court arguments, one of the legal journals said I was rude, aggressive, and obnoxious. We won that case unanimously. In 2009, we opened our permanent office in Jerusalem. One year later, I found myself before the International Criminal Court in The Hague, the ICC. The Palestinian Authority, much like the BDS movement of today, sought to utilize an international tribunal for one purpose and one purpose only, to delegitimize the Jewish State of Israel. I argued the law, and the law was clear. The Palestinian Authority was not a state. It had no business being before the ICC, and the case must be dismissed. BDS is the flip side of that same coin. We call it lawfare, utilizing the legal system to delegitimize a people or a group. They cloak it in the garb of the civil rights movement. This is no civil rights movement. This is an unconstitutional and illegal advocacy taking place in the United States of America. Make no mistake, the goal is unambiguous. The intent is clear. It is to create an environment so hostile that those students of you that are here today would be afraid to say the word, I am a Zionist. I am a Jew. Never, never, on the memory of our families, should we allow that to take place, and the least in the United States of America. Welcome back to the broadcast, everyone. We're joined now by our senior advisor for global and international affairs, former acting director of national intelligence and ambassador to Germany. Our colleague Rick Rennell. Rick, I am um, appalled at the disclosures yesterday of the State Department employee and then the Homeland Security employee. The State Department employee, and you worked in the State Department for a long time, is a foreign foreign service officer. Can we play what he said again? I mean, I hate I hate playing this. And if you got kids listening, I, I'm just going to say turn it off for 30 seconds here. You know, turn the volume down. But uh, you know, you got to hear this. This is what he said. The Jews worship Satan, and they're Satan's own children. Understand who our enemies are. Don't apologize. Never, ever, ever apologize for being white. Never do that. Oh, you can't be racist or sexist or homophobic. Says who? He's an anti-Semite. He's he's a white supremacist, and he's a uh, senior foreign service officer in the United States State Department, and no one's doing a darn thing about it. Look, uh, what really is troubling for me is to see somebody who's so comfortable in the, uh, you know, terrible comments. They're not only not factual, and I think that's what uh, people at the State Department should focus on, is here's a guy who is charged with being a Foreign Service officer representing America around the world. This isn't just a PR problem. He's actually pushing fake information. He's pushing lies. Not only is he an anti-Semite and all of those issues, but when the State Department decides to just say, oh, it's free speech and he gets to say whatever he wants, they're missing the fact that he's actually pushing lies as a Foreign Service officer, as someone who's representing the United States of America. So I would fire him if I were in charge of the State Department. I would immediately fire him on the grounds of we cannot have individuals who so comfortably push lies and stupidity. I mean. This is what I want to know, Rick. How is he not fired? I mean, he wrote, uh, uh, this is, again, uh, uh, and on this podcast, you can get the videos, you can get the blogs. It's not like you have to, it's not secret. Uh, He wrote, Jews are the enemies of God and the children of the devil. Who's the enemy? It's the Jew. He said that Jesus Christ came to save the world from Jews. They're the seed of the serpent, the brood of vipers. Uh, He said, we are invaded, egged on by traitors and Jews who hate the white race. Um, he is, again, currently an employee of the Department of State. Uh, they have confirmed his current employment 
Uh, so he's not been put on leave at this point. Maybe he will be soon, hopefully. But they get paid during that. He's a foreign service officer, and Rick, that's why I kept talking about it. being a foreign service officer. Rick is is not is 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 a real job in the state. I have friends. I remember in college, that was kind of like their first major goal was I'll get to grad school, I'll qualify for the language exam, then I got to take the foreign service exam and go through that training to become a foreign service officer was a big deal. Look, I, I believe that if you're going to step up and say I want to represent America, yeah. oh and I want to uh, put the mantle of being an American representative, that there's a higher calling, there's a higher bar that you have to meet. Um, not only is he uh, a problem for the, the State Department in terms of a PR issue, a problem for America in terms of a PR issue, but again, he's pushing lies. What he is saying is just not true, and he's so comfortable in it. I have to ask the question, what are the other lies that he's comfortable pushing. What is he up to in terms of his, his his thinking and his strategy? I would question his work ethics. I would question uh, how he formulates uh, being a diplomat because he's so comfortable with pushing these uh, lies. To me, Rick, also, I mean, we have another individual working inside DHS. So, so their job is to defend our homeland. And she was, used to work for the PLO. Trump administration shut that office down. Biden administration hires her to handle asylum claims and immigration claims from the Middle East. And October 7th, she was uh, posting on her social media a Hamas terrorist parachuting in to kill uh, a Jews in Israel. And she wrote, uh, again, respect our existence or res- expect resistance. Simple, no apologies. Uh, F Israel and any Jew that supports Israel. And you wonder who she's led into our country. Yeah, she's making critical decisions about who gets to come in. She's making critical decisions about the national security and uh, safety of Americans. And yet here she is literally pushing the idea of justice. I, I find it very, very troubling that the Biden administration doesn't view this as a problem. They view this as just a free speech issue. And I, I, that, is, Rick, that is insane. That they do that, that that they don't understand. I mean, Christopher Ray is, you know, raiding pro-lifers with guns a blazing and they don't show up at the State Department and say, hey, we need to talk to this guy. He's threatening Jews. I mean, that's to me is what's unreal here. Yeah. It's unreal. But it's also, Jay, I mean, no one is surprised that the Biden administration has lowered the bar for engagement with Iran and have a, they've allowed individuals to come in who clearly have been cozying up to this regime. I, the American people need to understand the bar has been lowered by the Biden administration in terms of what we can deal with when it comes to a uh, radical regime like Iran that wants to kill Jews, that wants to kill Americans. They uh, want Israel to cease to exist, and they also hate America. I don't understand why we would view these individuals as not treasonous to our country. Let's go to Bill in Wyoming on line three while we've got Rick. Hey, Bill, welcome to Seculo. You're on the air. Yeah, thanks for taking my call. I, I agree with you. I mean, uh, I, I just get, I got really incensed watching that video about my Orcas because of the fact that as far as I'm concerned, he's insulting his uh, heritage by saying he's a, survi- he's a descendant of the survivor of Holocaust and uh, yet he's allowing this to happen, plus the fact that I'd like to know exactly who this, who this very person was that not only invited this gal back to the United yeah. States, but also hired her to... Okay, so let me tell you what we're doing. What we're do- I'm, we're going to initiate uh, our, our FOIA process against uh, to find out what we can find out here, uh, which is important. But I, I think, the, the and I appreciate your call, the, the fundamental problem here is, Rick, is that these people are running portions of our government, including, as you said, the asylum issue. So she's handling asylum cases from the Middle East. She's a pro-Palestinian PLO operator, pro-Hamas person. Who do you think she's letting in or recommending for admission? First of all, not not my relatives, I'll tell you that. Correct. Her supervisor should immediately go through all of the cases that she has handled to see how many times she just rejected someone if they were Jewish. How many times she allowed someone to come in if they had radical ideas? I mean, her judgment is totally impaired and she should not be in a position where she's determining 
who gets to come into our country. Play again. This is Senator Josh Hawley uh, just asking uh, Mayorkas about this because it's one thing we talk about Hamas and Israel in the Middle East. It's one thing when you talk about their, their sympathizers inside the U.S., not their sympathizers, their actual employees inside the U.S. government. Bite three. What about people who say things like, on October the 7th, F Israel, I'm cleaning up the language here, F Israel, the government and its military, are you ready for your downfall? People who say things like F Israel and any Jew who supports Israel. May your conscience haunt your dreams until your last breath. Palestine will be free one day. F apartheid Israel and is any Israeli. But this is pretty extreme rhetoric, don't you think? Senator, um, I do, and I think there is a distinction between espousing or endorsing terrorist ideology and uh, speech uh, that is uh, odious, that does not rise to that um, level. Fair enough. This person works for you. Yeah. And by the way, that re- reached the level of, of, of threat and violence, okay? I mean, so, who, who, Rick, who are we kidding here? Look, let, let's be very clear that, that he is saying, Mayorkas is saying, a Biden administration official, a cabinet official of our U.S. government is saying this is free speech and it's protected and they should be allowed to do it. Yeah. I think higher bar when you are a government official representing the United States and making decisions about our safety and security, you cannot make terrible comments that are flatly wrong and be comfortable with it. No, absolutely right. Absolutely. I appreciate it, Rick. Thanks so much for being with us. Thanks for your insight. Thank Folks, you, we have launched today our Faith and Freedom Drive. And, and I want to encourage you to do something right now. We're at a moment in history we prayed would never happen, but it has. We are experiencing global attacks on faith and freedoms in ways we could never imagine. What we are witnessing in Israel could be the precursor to a second Holocaust. More Jews killed in that one day, October 7th, since the Holocaust. Here at the ACLJ, we are uniquely positioned to meet these evil attacks because of your support. We've assembled an elite legal team in our offices in Jerusalem, Washington, D.C., and around the globe. And all thanks, all this happens because of you, our donors. Can we get that music a little bit lower for me, please? Thanks. In order to meet the legal demands that we have to deal with head on here, we need your support now more than ever. The country needs you. The world needs you. Israel needs you. And we need you. Your gifts will be doubled through our ACLJ Freedom Drive today. Go to aclj.org slash faith and freedom. Jordan? Yeah, I just want to underscore that one more time. I mean, we need you at the ACLJ. We need you to be that supporter. The country, you know the country needs you. I mean, think about the issues we're just facing today, and the economic issues, the war, the world. But Israel needs you too. Join this faith and freedom drive. Double your impact. aclj.org. Donate. Anti-Semitic hate crimes in the U.S. already reached record highs before the Hamas attacks on October 7th, up 25 percent last year. The Jewish community is uniquely, uniquely targeted by pretty much every terrorist organization across the spectrum. And when you look at a a group that makes up 2.4 percent, roughly, of the American population, it should be jarring to everyone that that same population accounts for something like 60% of all religious-based hate crimes. In recent weeks, college campuses have become flashpoints for debate and protest over the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, with some opposing groups scuffling in the streets. What we're seeing is absolutely terrifying, and it's reminiscent to just some of the most terrible times of Jewish history. Even with police, you know, it's still frightening. We're trying to go about our daily lives, and we're trying to continue to be proud and stay strong as our Jewish selves, but it's still scary. What is happening uh, on college campuses across this country uh, in in response to Hamas's vile, disgusting, barbaric terrorist attack uh, on Israel, the slaughtering of women, children, babies, Uh, It's disturbing. We call upon world leaders and upon each state's leadership to make sure that Jews are protected and defended and that uh, the fight against anti-Semitism is covered in all layers of the legal and law enforcement systems. Understand that while Israel may be our closest ally in the Middle East, 
Hamas has allies here, here in America, and they seem to be concentrated on college campuses. The same campuses who deny conservative speakers are organizing pro-terrorist movements. We get to some of your calls at 800 Harry Hutchison, our uh, director of policy, just uh, joined us in the studio here. Harry, the, the, the situation with these students, we represent uh, law students in Rutgers University Law School. And let me tell you, what they're experiencing there is unfortunately now typical of what's going on in campuses all over. Here's the concern. It's not just the students. It's also the faculties that are supporting this, Harry. I, I, how do you support what Hamas did as a, a member of a faculty of a prestigious university in the United States? Well, it's a very good question. But the faculty has allowed itself to be indoctrinated over a period of decades. And they have basically uh, drunk from, if you will, the pit of uh, ideology. And so basically they t- tell themselves that we can divide human beings into two specific categories, the oppressed and the oppressor, the victims and victimhood. And so they have skillfully encouraged their students to label Israel as the all-time oppressor, as an apartheid regime. As a consequence, we now see on campuses from Cornell to George Mason to Berkeley, uh, students who are suggesting that the throats of Jews be slit, that Jews be raped. And keep in mind, we're talking about American students, and we can see protests in London and in Paris. They're saying, gas the Jews. They are carrying swastikas. And so what we are seeing is a worldwide revival of evil that I never expected to see in my lifetime. I want to go through, we've got a lot of our team here, and I want everybody to make a comment here. So we're also looking at UN specific activity at the United Nations. We've already put the UNCC on notice. Let's give a quick recap on that. Yep. So we just sent a letter to the UN Security Council and uh, we notified them as we do every month as a new president comes in about the fact that the Palestinian Authority cannot have statehood declared by the UN General Assembly. And then we put them on more notice, drawing attention to the fact that the Palestinian Authority does not have any control over so-called Palestinian land as Hamas is running rampant and they are absolute terrorists. Andy, we're also looking at, as we help the students, you were on that call with uh, yesterday. Yes. And so we've got that going. We'll talk to Jeff about that in a minute, but that is in the works as well. Yes. We're the, looking, on the domestic side for the students. We are looking to, to protect a student at a particular university. Rutgers. In the, well, we'll call it out then. Rutgers Law School, who has been uh, attacked, uh, not physically attacked, but is scared for his personal safety because he is Jewish. Yep. And we are not going to tolerate that, and we're going to take action with respect to that as well. I want to play again, then I want to get Jeff Balbon's comment. I want to play that statement of mine at the Security Council, at the General Assembly of the United Nations. Not, not to boast about the statement, but to say the day has come that I was hoping would never come. Make no mistake, the goal is unambiguous. The intent is clear. It is to create an environment so hostile that those students of you that are here today would be afraid to say the word, I am a Zionist, I am a Jew. Never, never, on the memory of our families, should we allow that to take place, and the least in the United States of America. And Jeff, unfortunately, here we are. Here we are, Jay. Here we are. That's right. Um, I grew up in New York, family of Holocaust survivors, um, and I will tell you that what took place in the lead up to the Holocaust is already dwarfed by what we're seeing, not just on the streets of the Middle East or Europe, but in the streets and campuses of America today. The support for an openly genocidal cause in the face of the most barbaric terror and the treatment of Jewish students who are literally afraid for their lives across the board is horrific. And specifically in some of these cases we're talking about here, it's been ongoing discrimination, ongoing messaging that is hostile to their very existence. 
Yeah, you're absolutely right. Let's take Warren's call out of yeah. uh, Idaho on line one. Warren, go ahead. Hey, thanks for taking my call, guys. You know, you listen to all this stuff and what you're talking about now, and we're seeing the anti-Semitism. We have an enemy that's bigger than people. We have a, a devil that hates people, but he really hates the Jews and Christians. And he's doing everything he can as fast as he can to destroy it right now on a global scale that is biblical. And it's like we've said before, we are literally fighting for the soul of our country, our democracy, and civilization right now. And I stand with the ACLJ. Thank you so much, Warren. We appreciate that. I mean, I saw that message you did when I was off uh, Radio Dad to to pastors, you know, and and I, I've heard it from a lot of Christians too who uh, support Israel but just want more insight because they see the news and they say, well, I just wish they, that many kids didn't have to get killed when they bombed yeah. Hamas. And what's the explanation? Then they learn about Hamas more and what Hamas is putting the kids in the way of it, and they're just more horrified at Hamas actually. But but we've seen that movement that you know Christians got to wake up too. They, uh, well, un, un, just like you said, I mean, it, it, it's the, the Jew first, the Christian next. Yes, yeah, the Saturday people and then the Sunday people. I mean, that's exactly that's, that's exactly what this is. And um, Jeff, what's the kind of the temperature read in, in New York right now? It's got to be very, very tight, tense. People are afraid to go out in the streets being obviously Jewish. People are afraid to wear yarmulkes in the streets. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you, my... my... In New York. I mean, think about that in for New a minute. York, in New York, in the streets of New York, people are they're, they're rampaging around, tearing down the images. People are you know, putting up signs of the hostages, pictures of their faces, saying, please release them. And there's a rampage around New York, tearing them down. There have been videos of some New Yorkers, not Jewish, standing up against this. It's not like America, the soul of America is dead. It's not like the soul of normal Americans are dead. But I think that there's been, been beaten down for so long by all these forces telling us that we're all bad and we're all evil. When the truth is, it's in service of this tremendous evil that is open. As, as Jordan says, as you're saying, you know, they're saying they call Israel the little Satan and America the great Satan. And, and let's also say this is not meant to scare Americans, but it's a wake up call. Look at what happened in Israel. Do not think it's not possible for it to happen here. We have untold tens of thousands of people with the same mindset who've come through our lack of a border over the last years, and this country is well, not we as got prepared. A, we, got, we got asylum officers that are PLO members that are letting them in right for the front That's door. Right. I mean, this isn't That's the, right. you don't have to go through the back agents. door. Go right in through the front door if you got these people running it. That's right. And we have Iranian agents making policy for our administration. Right. It's for Homeland Security. All right. Here's what we've got, folks. We are at a moment in history that none of us thought would happen again. But here we are. It has happened again. We're experiencing global attacks on faith and freedom in ways we can't imagine. It's happening in proportions we cannot imagine. We are witnessing in Israel could be the precursor to the second Holocaust. Here at the ACLJ, we are uniquely positioned to meet these evil attacks head on. We've assembled an elite legal team. You've seen for, or heard from a lot of them today in order to meet this challenge. We can't do it without your help. We need you more than ever. The country needs you more than ever. The world needs you more than ever. Israel needs you more than ever, and so does the ACLJ. Now, folks, let me tell you something right here. This is where we need you to go to aclj.org forward slash faith and freedom and make a gift, and it will be matched. Faith and Freedom Drive is in place because of the situation we find ourselves in. ACLJ.org forward slash faith and freedom. And if you can make that a recurring gift each month, you become a champion for the ACLJ. But this is the most important time in our history. It absolutely is, folks. Become an ACLJ champion if you can make it recurring. But be, again, part of our Faith and Freedom Drive. Double the impact of that donation. ACLJ.org. Do it today.